Uh, Renee Stevens is the VP of U.S. Automotive Quality at J.D. Powers. Now, they, uh, they hit to a lot of bases that are really critical to this industry, as you know. Uh, but here is the issue of consumer satisfaction. You may have seen a lot of the stories bubbling up over the last year or two about how technology in the car has led for some very rocky waters in terms of consumer satisfaction with the vehicle. Maybe the technology doesn't work well, maybe it does, but they don't understand it well. A lot of this comes down to either dealer training, interface design, connectivity being robust. There are so many different wheels now that are starting to impinge on the satisfaction of that car and how much I can utilize all of it within a day or two of getting it home and learning how to use it. it used to be simple, P-R-N-D-L, turn the key, turn the wheel, and use the pedals. And of course, now there's a lot more variables. So let's, uh, let's get some insights into how this is going to be managed and not draw down consumer satisfaction. Please welcome Renee Stevens from J.D. Powers. We're going to rock, 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 rock. Hey, good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, as, as Brian mentioned at J.D. Power, we spend a lot of time talking to customers and, and listening to customers. And what I'd like to do to also is thank the audience here because many of you have listened to customers as well and we'll show you the results. Um, so what I'm gonna talk about today is just some insights. We've seen a lot of great technology, but some of the insights on where are customers today and are they on the road to autonomous? So what we're going to explore in the, uh, in the next few minutes here are really um, the automotive trends from a customer's viewpoint. Um, this is not J.D. Power's view, this is actually the customers. And really looking at, are they ready? Are, 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 what are they expecting out of the technology? Have we delivered what they've expected out of the technology? And are they building the confidence that they need in order to take those next steps and go into those fully autonomous vehicles? And then what do we need to keep in mind as an industry as, as we move forward into that? But before we get into all the technology, let me just take a step back and again show you where we've been and how, how this has come about. And really in the past, as you, as you think about it, quality was actually a differentiator. Uh, and as we looked at probably about 20 years ago, there was a 200 to 300 problem per 100 difference between the best vehicle in the industry and the worst um, in, in, in the essence of quality. So, so people used quality to actually sell the vehicle. Those that had the best could actually use that as a selling point. Those that didn't, maybe they, uh, they used styling or they put some money on the hood, um, but, it, but it was really a differentiator. Um, then fast forward, um, again, actually a lot of you that are in this room listen to the feedback that you receive from your, your customers on things that were wrong, things that were broken, and really you narrowed that gap and, and quality became more of a given um, as we looked at it. And, and over time, and there's just been some tremendous improvement in the industry, and as we looked at it, it crossed all categories. It wasn't just one area, there was really a tremendous improvement, with the exception of a couple. If you look at it, um, all of our multimedia, um, our navigation systems, and all those areas, actually those have been increasing in, in what we've heard from customers as reported problems. Um, but as we look at it, it really wasn't that we were, we were putting more failures out in the industry. It was really this concept of we're, we're in, inducing all the complexity into our, into our systems, into our components. Um, and, and really, as we looked at it, it was um, a lot of soft inadequacies in our vehicles that customers were experiencing. Things like, I don't understand how it works. I, I just, I don't, I don't understand. I'm trying to get to um, this screen, but I don't know what screen to go to first. Um, it wasn't intuitive. So all those types of soft inadequacies are really what we're hearing from our customers, and those have been increasing over time. And overall, what we've seen is that it's really usability that they're talking about um, and all this experience that they have um, that they are, they are having problems with. So as we at JD Power like to do, we, we redesigned our study to try to measure some of that customer insight and really provide it back so that we can, again, improve the industry. Uh, and what we found is that the consumers actually are redefining what they're calling quality. And in the past, it's been more um, hard, hard failures, um, but today it's really usability takes a much greater role in that, in that definition. So let's talk about another trend, the one probably you're very familiar with. So how much time on average do you spend every day in your vehicle? And we, we looked at a study by uh, Arbitron and on average, 
It's about three hours a day, um, every weekday. Now, for those of you in LA, I know that's probably a good day. Um, but, and, and then on the weekends, it's another two hours. So that's a whole lot of time in your vehicle. It's 20 hours per week. It's like a part-time job, as you, if you think about it, in your vehicle every day or every week. Um, and, and time is valuable. It's very valuable to us. Um, people want to be productive during that time. They want to be entertained. And again, as we looked at that, it became it really looking at expanding needs. We heard customers say, hey, we want more flexibility. We want more personalization. Um, and manufacturers are listening. And it really increased functionality. We want to use that time. So as you, there's been a lot of um, uh, previous presenters talking this as well, a lot of complexity in the environment in the vehicle. Just thinking about in the cockpit of the vehicle, um, it's in, what you see on the screen is you know, just some of the controls that the customers can interact with, uh, can interact with some of the um, standard um, features. But uh, again, uh, now enter in, um, as we all know here, the, the smartphones and people bringing in their technology, they're connecting in technology through the vehicles and they're also wanting to connect to the cloud. And so there's a lot of complexity that we're bringing into these vehicles along with what's already there in the vehicles for customers to really interact with. And while manufacturers are striving for simplicity, what we're really doing is we're still struggling with the complexity. So, so what do people want? What, do, what are customers really interested in? There's a whole lot of great, great products out there, and we, we've already heard about some of them, and there's some great ones out the door here. Um, so we actually conduct a study. We call it the Emerging Technology Study. We've been um, looking at for a number of years and looking at what are customers' interests in, in these emerging technologies and trends. And we look at it on two, two, two areas. We look at it pure interest, so with no price, just what would you be interested in? And then we also add a price to it to say, okay, how much are you willing to pay for it? Because these do come with some kind of a, a, a cost a, a, attached to them. And we have seen some interesting trends over the years. Um, so as we look at it, um, and I'll, I'll just go through a few of them. There are about 60 some odd tech technologies that we end up uh, looking at every year. Um, about 80% of customers told us that they would like some kind of wireless connection. Of course, that's in, in some cases, that's coming in today in some of our vehicles. Um, but as we look at putting a price tag on it, so if we put $300 on the hood and say, okay, it's $300, that interest drops to about 55%. So yeah, we want it, but do we want to pay for it yet? Just taking another example, um, again, simple one, device linkage. I would, the majority of customers said, yes, we do want device linkage. We, we, we expect it. Um, and in fact, as we put prices on it, it doesn't matter. They look at it and say, uh, the price doesn't matter. I expect it. In fact, I expect it at zero price. It's, it's a given. And so it's interesting how fast that technology can go from a I like it to a given. So I'm just again going through some of the technologies that we have. And most of the technologies, these are the top areas people were, were the most interested in and at a price. Um, as we looked at it. And some of the technologies just made sense to them. Things like surround view cameras, the wireless charging stations, and things that would make their life more safe, more convenient, more comfortable. Um, those were the areas that people tended to focus on because they had experience outside the vehicle. Um, you heard uh, mentioned today the building of trust. And, and really these are areas where they've built trust in the automotive and how that's been delivered to them. So that made sense to them and keep me safe, help me communicate. There are other items, that we, we just saw some really cool things, um, but from a consumer standpoint today, it's still a little bit out there, there's still some interest. Um, in fact, more in the, if you look at the premium car um, buyers, um, brand buyers, um, they tend to have a little bit higher um, level of interest in some of the advanced technologies. Um, but, but these are areas where people just still didn't see all of the value, they just haven't experienced yet, they're not too sure. Um, so it's coming, um, and we'll watch the trends as we go, go through, but it's um, some of the areas they looked at like laser headlights, and they said, are these even legal? Can we have these on our vehicles? Um, so there's some that the customers just did, did not see value yet. So let me go down and take a look at how are we delivering this technology today? And again, just looking at one example, um, voice recognition, as, as we heard earlier, and I'm calling that the great enabler. Because um, if you think about it, um, the, the purpose of the voice rack is really to, from the safety standpoint, 
to keep your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road, you know, mind on the drive, and really help prevent some of that distraction. So it's really a great enabler to get it to work right. Um, and and what, what we're going to show is, uh, again, just a brief uh, demonstration, but I want to let you know this is probably in the most ideal situation. Um, the video you're going to see, the people that are in it are stationary. They're not moving. They're not going 70 miles an hour down the highway. And, and let's just see their experience. Greenwood. Greenwood, Esther. Accepted. Drive to 860 Hampshire Boulevard. Navigate to the nearest Pete's Coffee and Tea. Is that correct? Because you can't. <laughs> okay, so how many of you can relate to that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, a lot of our customers can as well. Um, but interestingly enough, even with that experience, 70% uh, of our customers said, yes, we are interested in having this natural voice activation um, pre-priced with no price attached. But if we add a price again, they have $500 integrate into the vehicle, that drops to less than half, 44%. No surprise, you just saw how it's being delivered. Um, now, look at a smartphone. So if you look at how we're implementing our smartphone, people have had um, a chance to work with it, and it actually works. Price is a little bit lower again, interest comes back up again. So customers are interested, in, and, and they're wanting to have this technology, but they also expect it to work. Um, so let's look at some of the, these technologies as the precursor to making sure that customers have confidence as they get into fully autonomous and, and getting to what I call the ultimate enabler, which is the autonomous vehicles. So we've been, we've been asking over the last several years, so how interested are you in autonomous? And we put a price tag on it of $3,000 and said, okay, uh, how, how interested are you? Starting in 2012, about 20% 20 of the customers said yes, even at $3,000. Um, they had excitement about it. This sounds really cool. I want to get into it. By 2013, they said, mm, okay, yeah, I'm still a little interested, um, a little bit insurance, but they had started to um, have some experience with some of the technology that we're putting on the vehicle. And, and they said, hey, there's things that are still not working right. When we went to this year, 2014, we're, we're starting to see actually that grow because people are really gaining more experience with some of the building blocks of autonomous. And as you see on there, they're, they're having more experience with things like the adaptive cruise and it's working, um, with the low co um, speed collision avoidance, uh, with rear cameras, with all the building blocks of, of technology that will allow us to gain that confidence on and really go fully autonomous, we are really starting to see um, them growing interest on, uh, in that, those areas. And with that, they're growing interest in fully autonomous. But the interest is not equal. As we look at it, it's a stronger for, the, for males right now, also for single families. Um, and interest in actually higher if you have children in your household. And we heard that distraction earlier. Um, that's you know, really what you're looking at is um, parents know that they're distracted in the vehicle and they recognize that being fully autonomous, they could actually be more safe while they're yelling at the kids in the background. Um, so they're much more interested. There's also a difference by age. Age is also a factor. As you look at the early bloomers and the late bloomers, 
you know, a little bit lower interest level. Again, they haven't really experienced some of the building blocks for the technology. As you get to the Generation X, it grows to about 25%, so um, growing. But look at Generation Y. I mean, they've grown up with this, some of this technology. So for them, it's really cool. They're very interested. Unfortunately, they don't have as much money to, to pay for it um, yet, um, but wait to 2025 and they, their earnings will catch up. So when you hear about autonomous, we've asked customers, what does it mean to you? Um, and they have different ideas, as you can guess, and, and you saw some of them again earlier. Some of them think it's, hey, I'm ready, I'm, I'm engaged, I'm ready to assume control, I, I'm here just in case or it could be I'm completely detached. I think we saw some you know, cool videos. I'm going through Switzerland and Italy, um, but I'm in the back seat, or possibly not even in the vehicle at all. So which do you think is most prevalent in the mind of customers? Do you know? It's actually completely detached. That's what they think. They think, when they think autonomous, they think completely detached. That was the most prevalent one. But really, as we look at most likely delivery, it's going to be probably somewhere in between. I, they need to be prepared to assume control as we go forward. So going back to just the, the original question, are we ready? Um, consumers um, definitely have seen um, a, 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 an evolved um, definition of quality over the years, and now it does include this concept of usability. Um, they're excited about the array of opportunities um, ahead of them. Um, and, but they're also confused and a little bit frustrated, as you saw, when we try to actually implement that. We've got some great ideas, but translating them into really real life and real world um, situations are sometimes difficult for manufacturers, and they have a lot of decisions to make. Um, but really what we need to do is get semi-autonomous right first, and, and we're working. I think there's a lot of great technology and people are gaining trust and gaining those building blocks. And as we get that confidence, we'll grow with, uh, with autonomous and fully autonomous. So really a cadence delivery approach is really important by the manufacturers, really cadencing it out, building that confidence, and setting realistic customer expectations. Um, but all in all, keep it safe. So I want to thank you for your time and really appreciated this opportunity. If you'd like to have more discussion with me, uh, please do so. My uh, email address is on the board. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renee.